This calculation comes out of our textbook. It's an example for Norton's theorem. And just to remind you of Norton's theorem, it states that the voltage sources and resistors in an electric circuit can be replaced with a single current source in parallel with a resistor. So in this example, we need to calculate the current flow through the 20 ohm resistor using Norton's theorem. So let me show you the steps we'll be following. So first of all, we have an electric circuit below with four resistors. The fourth resistor is our load resistor of 20 ohms, and we have a voltage source of 12 volts. So the first step to solve for Norton's theorem is to find a Norton's current. Now, let me write down the formula for Norton's current. So you can see what we've done here is we have short-circuited the load resistor. So we can call this I short circuit current and that is basically the same as Norton's current. Now to calculate Norton's current we use the current divider rule. Okay so for the current divider rule it's going to be R2 over R2 plus R3. We'll put that inside brackets and we multiply by the total current. Okay, so in order to calculate Norton's current, we first need to determine the total current. And here we use Ohm's law. Okay, so to calculate the total current, I total, it's going to be V total over R total. So essentially, we need to calculate the resistance total. So to calculate the resistance total, after short-circuiting the load resistor, you can see the R2 and R3 resistor are in parallel, and we have a series resistor, which is R1. So R1 is in series, plus our parallel branch. Now, two resistors in parallel, we can use the product sum rule. So it's going to be R2 times R3 over R2 plus R3. So the first resistor, is uh, 6 ohms and then R2 and R3 are in parallel so it's going to be 10 times 15 over 10 plus 15 so we end up with a resistance total of 12 ohms okay now that we've got the resistance total the voltage total is 12 volts divided by the resistance total of 12 ohms and that gives us one amp. Okay, now we can actually calculate Norton's current and the short circuit current by substituting the values over here. Okay, so we have R2, which is uh, 10 ohms, over R2, which is 10 ohms, and plus R3, which is 15 ohms, and we multiply by the total current of 1 amp. Therefore, the short circuit current, or Norton's current, is going to be 0,4 amps. Right, so the next step is to find uh, Norton's resistance. And in this step, what we do is we remove the voltage source. You can see I've called that uh, short circuit AB. And by removing the voltage source to calculate Norton's resistance, okay, we now have R3 in series. And we have R1 and R2 in parallel. Okay, so R1 multiplied by R2 over R1 plus R2. Okay, that branch is in parallel. The third resistor is 15 ohms. And we use the product sum rule because R1 and R2 are in parallel. R1 is 6 ohms multiplied by 10 over 6 plus 10. 10 and this will give us Norton's resistance and that's going to give us 18,75 ohms. Right, the final step, we need to draw Norton's equivalent circuit and calculate the load current using the current divider rule. So you can see that we've simplified the circuit with one single current source and one resistor and this is known as Norton's current and Norton's resistance and then we can calculate the load current. Now to calculate the load current, IL, we use the current divider rule to calculate the load current. 
and it's going to be Norton's resistance over Norton's resistance plus the load resistance multiplied by Norton's current. Okay, so if we substitute all those values in there and we have already calculated Norton's resistance, it was 18,75 over 18,75 and the load resistor is 20 ohms and Norton's current we worked it out to 0,4 amps and so therefore the load current will be 0,194 amps right so we've solved for the load current through the load resistor utilizing Norton's circuit